Miller outside the Brandenburg Gate there in Berlin. Now, the Australian Medical Association says Australia has an unhealthy and even dangerous alcohol culture. The group will host a national summit on that very subject this week. Now, Dr Stephen Parnis is an emergency physician who's also the vice president of the Australian Medical Association and he joins us this morning to speak about this summit. Stephen Parnis, good morning and thanks for making time. Good morning. The, the summit's being held in Canberra. Who do you have addressing this summit? Who wants to have their views heard on this matter? We've got the range, Virginia. We've got public health specialists, uh, uh, relatives of victims of alcohol abuse, politicians uh, and um, uh, even law enforcement specialists. So really we've got the range saying how uh, serious they view this problem. What's the government, uh, government's position on, on this particular issue and the fact that you're calling it as an unhealthy, dangerous alcohol culture? Well, to be blunt, they've been reluctant to engage with us on this. Uh, I think they come from the perspective of personal responsibility. Uh, we've had a particular uh, approach in Australia for many decades and it hasn't worked. Uh, alcohol is still far and away a huge problem. When you say they're reluctant to get involved, you mean you don't have a, a government minister, you don't have the health minister addressing your, your summit or anyone else? Uh, as of late last week, we hadn't had uh, the government commit to providing uh, uh, input uh, during the ne next two days. We've seen in recent uh, months and years moves uh, in various jurisdictions for lockouts at one o'clock, last drinks by three o'clock, uh, which, which are fine uh, ways of stopping violence on the streets. But when you're talking about changing a dangerous culture in Australia, it, 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 that is a much more difficult objective, isn't it? This is a huge issue. Uh, we are contending with arguably 200 years of culture. But the fact is that the harms are so profound, so widespread. Everything is talked about in terms of millions of Australians. Uh, even a small improvement will make a huge difference for people from uh, children born with fetal alcohol all the way through to early dementia because of alcohol. And when you talk about the unhealthy and dangerous alcohol culture, what you're, what the, the, cat, the cat you're trying to bell there is that we, we as Australians embrace alcohol as virtually every part of our lives. You're encouraged to drink early, no one really discourages you from drinking. Is that what you're hoping to take on and change? Absolutely. We glamorise not only alcohol, we glamorise alcohol abuse and we have always said that we are not about being wowsers. We think alcohol is an important and good thing of the Australian way of life, but the abuse is inappropriate and when three quarters of Australians know and acknowledge that we've got a problem, we think that's a good start to get some changes. What further measures would you like to see uh, state and territory governments in particular, because they obviously have the greatest jurisdiction here, do to restrict sales of alcohol, to stop culture burgeoning even further? Well, we think it's both a matter for the states and territories as well as the federal government. Our bottom line is we want a new national alcohol plan that has everything from the role of the Commonwealth in things like advertising, affordability, accessibility, mm. uh, states and territories with liquor licensing, uh, all the way down to local government as well. Everyone's got a Partners. Is alcohol too cheap? You talked about pricing. In certain circumstances, absolutely. Because if, uh, if young kids can get their hands on it easily, they drink heavily mm. and that causes serious, sometimes irreversible harm. Do, do you believe that there's institutional protection, if I can put it that way, for the industries that supply alcohol? We think in general terms they are uh, uh, given advantages which do put the Australian people at risk. Uh, a clear example is the saturation advertising we have. Uh, if you look at sport, the association association with alcohol now is an unhealthy one and that does promote earlier and heavier drinking. So you believe there need to be regulations and controls around advertising for example? We do. We think at federal level the loophole in advertising which allows cricket, uh, rugby league and uh, AFL to advertise uh, at a huge level uh, is an unhealthy thing and we've got to change it. But what do families need to do? Uh, we were speaking before about the government having the view of individual responsibility. Yes. What is that responsibility then in not fostering and passing on this alcohol culture to the next generation? Well absolutely families do need to do that and the evidence should uh, reflect it. There is recent evidence that's come to light that the so-called European model where you expose your younger children to small amounts of alcohol doesn't improve things. It actually leads to earlier and heavier consumption. So those messages are there for every mum and dad. Now we should ask you this morning before we let you go, we've just heard news of that young woman in Brisbane, the first test that's been, uh, she's undergone to see if she's come back from West Africa with Ebola has uh, come back negative, which, which is good news, although we of course wait the second test. What needs to be done from an Australian perspective 
effective in order to guard against this? Well, uh, there's two things. We've got to continually make sure that our domestic uh, readiness is at the best possible level. But the other thing is we've got to attack this epidemic at its source in West Africa. And the unfortunate reality is that the federal government is asleep at the wheel on this issue. Uh, they they have had uh, requests from the, uh, the UK and the US to get involved. The exit strategies can be negotiated, but all we're hearing are fairly lame excuses at the moment. Are they being overly cautious in your view? Oh, I because think... they do, and, and you know, r rightly point to the, the, the health consequences of health workers going over to treat Ebola victims in West Africa. We, do, we, we acknowledge the exit strategy needs to be there. We don't think they've worked hard enough on that. Uh, they've kept the OSMAT uh, services in the dark, as well as the chief health officers. Uh, really, if, if uh, our partners are working so closely with us in the Middle East, I'm sure they would want to work with us closely in West Africa, and uncontrolled will lead to uh, more than a million infected people, and that that's when it's going to come through uh, our airports. So Stephen Parnese, if, as, as you say, the, in your view, the government is asleep at the wheel, what do you think is going to be the direct consequence of that in West Africa? Uh uncontrolled growth in numbers. Uh, we're talking uh, thousands at the moment. Uh, will be hundreds of thousands uh, of not only infected but 50% uh, mortality and that's the way that you'll get people coming through the airports. And, and that can at least in part then in your view that, that could be sheeted home in terms of responsibility to the Australian government? Well we're saying that the government has known for weeks now that this is a problem that needs their attention. We have the abilities, we have the resources, we have volunteer experts ready to do the job, but the government is, is impeding rather than helping the process. Well, good to talk to you this morning. Good luck for the summit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Stephen Pan is there from the AMA. And if you'd like to get involved in what we're discussing on News Breakfast this morning, the drinking culture is one that we've discussed with you many times before. It seems intractable. Yep. And we know that you have strong views. Send emails to breakfast at your.abc.net.au. You can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter as well.